for me, overlanding and forward drive, this is what it actually means. It means finding a spot like this. Absolutely nobody. Uh, and uh, to get here, we went through the next to the on the beach next to the surf, and what a place. But we've got to think about what happens when things go wrong. Now we we take out insurance for our vehicles. We may take out life insurance. We might take out something that. Uh, you know, emergency medical evacuation and things like that. But what do we do to protect ourselves against dying in the event of a catastrophe? I'll give you an example. Um, what happens if we were in the, in the middle of nowhere and driving today and the worst thing happens and we misjudged and we got terribly, terribly stuck in the thing took our the sea took our vehicle and we were in a very very remote area this is not a particularly remote area but if it was a very remote area what would we do we would have to what I'm saying is we need to prepare for the eventuality not so much those that we can think of but those that we can't think of and in situations like that there has to be something in your vehicle that you can grab and run. Let's call it a grab bag. Let's call it a bug out bag. An emergency evacuation bag. Something that is going to save your life in the event of a catastrophe somewhere remote. Is It's not a doomsday bag. It's a I need to stay alive for 48 hours and I need to communicate my situation to somebody else. That's the purpose of a grab bag. Now I'm going to go through my thoughts. This is my grab bag. It's new. Not that I've, I've had grab bags before, but I thought if I'm going to do this video, great opportunity for me to create a new grab bag for myself for my 2018-2019 expeditions. I'm going to reverse engineer it so you can see what I've got in it and why I've put those things in it. Okay, I'll talk about where we put it in the vehicle at the end. Right, a book. Why would you want to book? Well, <laughs> you'll see later I have a pack of cards in here. Why would I want a book and a pack of cards? Think about your situation where you're traveling. What might happen? Now, the biggest danger in vehicle-based travel is of basically you have accident, fire, flood, and then you might have a major breakdown or getting very badly bogged and you can't free yourself. Some people might say the bag should have straps. Well, I'm not sure if that's a great idea because the, the counsel is, if you have a situation like that, Stay with your vehicle because you're far easier to find if you're with your vehicle. You'll be on a track. Uh, hopefully you'll be on a track. You'll be on a place where people might know where you are, know where to find you. And if they go looking for you, a vehicle is easier to see. So why a book? Because boredom is a danger. If you are sitting day after day after day with absolutely nothing to do, because you can imagine, maybe you've had a, the vehicle has been taken away by a flood or has been burnt out. There is nothing to do. So what do you do? You start thinking, oh, I can't sit here on my own. There's nothing to do. We've got to do something. We've got to do something. No. If you've done the basics, communicated your predicament, boredom is the danger. So you take a book and you'll see there's a pack of cards in there as well. I put it in plastic. Now I put it in plastic with these cards. Now you can use anything. Note paper. The cards are to write a message of help me on a track or something like that. I'll get to that later. So, something to write on, a message on, something to keep you from dying from boredom. A tarpaulin. You need to protect yourself against the elements, whatever they might be. Now remember, this is not uh, designed for, the bag isn't designed to keep you alive for two weeks. It's designed to keep you alive for like two days and two nights. 
So a tarpaulin to protect yourself from the ground, from the sun, from the rain. This is about two meters by two meters. It's not huge, it'll make a huge difference. Space blanket. I understand, and I've never actually had to use a space blanket, but I understand they are very good at insulating. I can't, I can't see quite how that would work. I don't know too much about them, but everybody says, take a space blanket, take a space blanket. So guess what? It doesn't take up any room. There's a space blanket. I'm sure in a difficult situation, I'd find a use for it. Let's have a look at food. Now, remember, not a doomsday bag. You don't have to keep yourself alive. You know, I don't have any seeds here. I'm not going to plant and, and do any agriculture. I'm going to keep myself alive. One of the best foods uh, for this kind of application are these dried... This is a Mexican chicken. Okay? It has an extremely long shelf life. And that's the key with a grab bag. Because maybe in two years' time you have not replaced it. You've kind of not really thought too much about it and suddenly you need it, the food's got to be good. Rice, pasta, absolutely, absolutely ideal. Of course, the challenge with this kind of food is you need water to prepare it. We'll get to that in a minute. So I've got two packs of a chicken dish and a rice, all right, as my food. Oh, here's an interesting thing. A mirror. A mirror is for attracting attention. Nothing better than a mirror for attracting attention. Okay, flashy, flashy, flashy if it's a sunny environment. If it's not a sunny environment, then not that useful. Apart from making sure you look good for your rescuers when they arrive. I have, and this is, I wouldn't say is a necessity, a tiny little stove and a little bit of gas. Okay, and I've got two tins of tuna. Okay, again, very long shelf life. Two tins will keep two people alive for actually quite a long time. Okay, that's kind of optional. The cooking thing here is, is optional, but uh, because I've got, of course, a lighter that I can make a fire with wood or sticks. But then again, if you're in the tundra in Alaska or I don't know, and there was no firewood, there was no fuel on the ground, you would have a problem. Okay, so I put a small stove in here. I can, because I'm a vehicle-based explorer, my grab bag doesn't need to be tiny. And so I can, I can put a few luxuries in there, if you like. The most critical thing about staying alive 48 hours is water. Now, can you carry water? I suppose you could. Maybe you could have a small, you know, 10 litre thing with your grab bag. That's a, not a bad idea, okay? But what I've done is here, is I've packed in my grab bag, something that I travel with in my vehicle and have done for the last 20 years. It is a water filter pump. Now it's a little bit bulky, and if you didn't have a water filter pump, you could perhaps use something like this. This is a flocculet. Basically you mix it with the, the uh, um, contaminated water and it, and it deflocculates, great word for Scrabble, all of the big bits to the bottom and leaves you with clean water. But it doesn't leave you with pure water. It doesn't leave you with potable water. So the tablets also add chlorinated. And there are a lot of products about, uh, out there. So I'm not going to go through water purification right now. That's not the subject of this video. But there are plenty, plenty of products. Even simple sachets like this. Simple products. Because if you find water, you're going to have to drink it. Now, one of the biggest dangers of being in a situation where you, 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 don't have, you don't have things to keep yourself alive and water, of course, is a, is a priority. If you drink bad water, it makes things worse because already you're in the danger of, of, of dehydration. You drink bad water. It affects your system. Suddenly, all the, the sluices open at both ends and the dehydration gets far, far worse than it would have been had you not drink in, drunk in any water at all. So water purification is an absolutely vital part of a grab bag. I also have a very, very large clear plastic. It's a very strong plastic bag and I can split it. I can use it for all different kinds and I can create a still with my own urine evaporation. I can create a small amount of drinking water. And if you don't know how to do that, I suggest Googling 
uh, a, making up making a um, an evaporative still out of twigs it can be done but you need clear plastic to do it so I've got that and it's a very strong plastic as well I haven't used you know cheap bin bags or anything got to be clear got to be fairly strong to be able to do the job now it gets on to um, some other little bits and pieces here that I think are essential you'll notice a lot of my stuff is in plastic bags now imagine if I was in a flood situation and I grab my grab bag and my mm, sat phone is wet and cannot be used tragedy question why do I keep something that I will use reasonably regularly my sat phone in my grab bag two reasons firstly I, by doing that I always know that my grab bag is where it should be because I have a mental reference all the time grab bag shouldn't necessarily be something that you just make and you hide because the trouble is you actually forget about it and the moment when tragedy strikes you've got m minutes sometimes seconds to react you've got to be able to know where it is grab it and go that's the purpose of it so if you never access it for anything other than an emergency situation it will get buried in your stuff and suddenly it's oh heavens what a we can't find the bag okay so I say you put your sat phone in your bag communication with the outside world is is the primary objective of a grab bag keeping you alive and enabling you to communicate so I use my sat phone every two or three nights on a trip I roll it in a waterproof plastic double tie zip bag and I'm very careful to make sure it is a hundred percent sealed <coughs> and I put it in my grab bag right now there's some detail down here credit card active credit card something that I don't use very often something that I won't need on a regular basis but it is active okay I might need to pay somebody some money to help me out you never know <clears throat> USB drive USB drive it contains all and this particular one contains all my family's uh, passports uh, all my important documents are on here now because <clears throat> you never know when you might need to prove somebody your identity having your passport in your grab bag is a mm, if he I, I don't carry it in my I don't and the reason be that because I'm traveling through countries and I need to uh, I grab it frequently and then there's a roadblock please can I see your passport I can't go into my grab bag for my passport my passport has to be somewhere where it is concealed from theft but I know where it is and I can get to it from the driver's seat so that's why I don't put it in my my grab bag but I do put okay little warning for those of you with Apple computers don't format this for Apple and then put your documents on it because remember Apple can read Windows but Windows can't read Apple so format it for Windows then put your stuff on because the chances are of uh, I'm sorry sir do you have a do you comprehend a one and B um, do you have an Apple computer because this won't work on your on your steam driven computer okay so just think of that keep it basic keep it simple and keep it protected from water damage okay right now <clears throat> vital peppermints you can decide if that's vital for yourself sticky tape a roll of cloth tape this is tough tape reason being is because I might need it for sticking up a label I might need to write on it I might need to attach something to something you can imagine small roll cloth tape it's tough and extremely versatile tissue papers <clears throat> tissue papers for well for a whole lot of things if you think about it and if you need to do a number two then you might need two okay so a little bit of tissue paper right a bag of stuff now this is where things are going to get quite interesting again clear plastic um, I've got some needle and thread it can be used for a thousand things small cable ties I've got um, adhesive uh, man little bandages it's almost like a miniature first aid kit all right could be used for a hundred different things 
Right, in my bag, pack of cards, already spoken of. Fire lighting stick. Now the fire lighting stick, I can rub anything carbon against it and it will create sparks. If you're going to carry one of these, make sure that you've got something with a carbon blade. Otherwise it's not going to work. But if everything gets wet, you can still make a fire with that. Torch. Do you carry a torch? Yes. Most versatile torch of all is a head torch. Now, a few schools of thoughts, you could take a large torch with a very strong beam with an SOS, auto SOS signal. Not a bad idea. Okay, but I haven't got one. I have got a head torch. But here's the most important thing about putting a head torch in a grab bag. Don't put the batteries the right way in. Okay, so for example, I put the batteries in, and most of these head torches have three batteries. Now, can you see the way I put them in there? I put the center one in the wrong way. Now, the reason why I do that is because if they're the wrong way, it could never accidentally be switched on, which can happen so easily with head torches. You just need to put a, apply a little bit of pressure on that, and the next thing, you grab bag, you open this, the batteries are flat. Very common. Okay, so put the batteries the wrong way around and pack it away for use in an emergency. Again, keep it watertight. I have a large, brightly coloured object. Now, if you're in Australia and you're using a dune flag, you can dune flags are ideal. Actually, dune flags, leave them on the truck. Highly visible. They're reflective. If you get the proper one, they're reflective. So they can see, be seen day or night. Something highly reflective. I'll get to that later. That's not the only highly reflective thing. Mirror, this, and there's one other object too that I'll come to. I am uh, long-sighted. I cannot read without reading glasses. <clears throat> I've got a cheap $15 pair of reading glasses and I just throw them in. Because, imagine, I'm in a situation where I need to grab quickly and I can't read anything doesn't help things okay if you have medicines that you cannot live without you have to put some of those medicines in your grab bag and then you have to remember to renew them expiry dates etc with with medicines and drugs and of course if you're crossing borders with drugs like that have the paperwork have the doctor's subscriptions some countries can be very sensitive to medicines and medication being transported across borders just be aware of that all right and this, lastly, is the little tin that I could use for cooking if I wanted to. Now let's have a look and see what I've got in here. This is actually going to be quite interesting. I have got some twine, matches in a waterproof container. I have a cigarette lighter in here somewhere. I will find it. Some means of carrying water. This is a loose bag and I actually bought it in Australia a long time ago, Australian Geographic. I still have it and I've carried it in my truck for decades. A means of carrying water, collecting and carrying water. It's vital because you might know of a river and walk down the river and see waters down there but it's ah, three miles from where your, where your situation is and you don't want to walk off the track you want to stay with your vehicle but you need to go and get water you need something to carry the water in right a container like this i've chosen this because it can also be used for cooking and all kinds of things and uh, fire lighters fire lighters is a good idea i like these ones because they don't make everything else smell they're sealed plastic i only have four of them <clears throat> i'll only need to make one or two fires won't i 48 hours remember and lastly, I think that's the last thing. Oh yes, two more things here. This is a roll of very, very bright uh, strap, strapping. The purpose of it, <clears throat> very, very bright color. If you don't want to use strapping, that's fine. But strapping again, I always think about, try and think about what other uses, you know, dual, you, every item should have more than one purpose. I can, be used to, I can use this to tie things, but I do have some cord for that anyway. But imagine yourself in a situation where, and this is how my mind works when I thought about laying out this. I'm trying to visualize a worst case scenario. 
Worst case scenario is the vehicle's burnt out or really badly bogged or, or, and it's off the main track. I've tried to cross a span or I've taken a little drive somewhere and I've got into trouble. I now need to tell the people on, who would be driving on the main track, which might be a distance from my vehicle, that I'm there and I need help. Or alternatively, when people come to rescue me, here I am. How do I do that? Well, that's what this is for. Okay, that's what this is for. And for example, what I would do is I would tie with my notepad, I would take a note, because I've got cardboard, I could make holes in it, okay, and tie it with the cord onto a bush that I lay right across the track. Cannot be mistaken. Put something brightly colored and preferably reflective in case a driver comes at night. They want to be able to see it before they crash into it. Okay, then you need to tell whoever's on the track, where are they? You need to say, help, I need help. Then they will get out of the vehicle and they will look around and they'll see, there's a piece of strapping, there's another piece of strapping, and there's another piece of strapping. I'm telling them to go that way, to go, it's an indicator. That's why it has to be brightly, brightly colored. And you can get this from hardware stores or anything like that. Um, you know what's good is um, if you go to a hardware store and you lo look for material used in building sites to warn people, don't fall here, there's a 400 foot hole in the building site. You know, that kind of stuff. Bunting, I think they call it, is fantastic for this kind of application. Wrap some up, put some in your grab bag. And a tool. I have a Leatherman that I don't actually use um, for my general purpose stuff. I use my Leatherman Wave. I just find it the most user-friendly multi-tool. But this is another one that I have and I really like it. It has the necessary tools. It can cut wire, important, uh, cut, scrape and saw. Saw is very important. Okay, you might need to saw some wood to make yourself some kind of shelter. Take a branch, cut off the edges, saw it off and attach it to something to put a flag on it or to put across the road or to make yourself and rig up some kind of shade or some kind of protection against the elements. So uh, get a re you need a reasonably good multi-tool to be absolutely safe. And of course, don't forget something to write with. A ballpoint pen is not reliable enough. Must take a pencil as well. That is about it. Now, let's talk about where in the vehicle would you put it? So there they are, the bag and 10 liters emergency water. And I actually put them immediately behind the seat, the driver's seat. And I always know where they are. Now, the challenge is if you've got a four-door station wagon, they can't go behind your seat because you might have somebody sitting behind you. Then a good alternative is to have the bag behind the center console, between the, the rear passengers, between their feet. Everybody can grab it. Everybody knows where it is. And it's accessible from all four doors. The trouble with putting them in the back of any vehicle is that this is prime real estate while camping. So things get moved around all of the time. And that's the last thing that you want happen to your grab bag. It's, you've got to find a place for it where you know it will be night or day. And that's a challenge. You know, making this bug out bag has been really good for me because I was actually, I got a little bit slack and so I went through my old one and I, I swapped a lot of stuff and added a lot of stuff. And what I've got now, without question, is the best bug out bag that I've ever had in any of my trucks. 4X Overland is one of the world's only truly global adventure travel 4x4 channels. Support our work and be the first to see our videos and be part of our growing community. Click the Patreon button on the screen now.